for people in the back, there are seats up front here, seats everywhere. So uh, the room is going to be pretty crowded today, especially. Uh, it holds 860 people. 860 people have signed up for the course, and there are over 50 people, or about 50 people right now, on the wait list. So some of the wait list of people are here. Um, there are seats, however, and the fire marshal was really super clear about this. You cannot be sitting in the aisles against the wall or anything. You need to be in a seat. Um, that's it. So as everybody's filling in, um, I'm Ken Hiltner. I'm the lecturer for the course. Uh, lecturer for the course. Hopefully you're here for English 22, sometimes called climate, sometimes called Eco-Criticism 101. Um, if not, yeah. If you're on the wait list, just to speak to those people, right now the, what's happening is people are dropping the course, happens every term. Why is that? Some people uh, take this course, they put it on their um, list, and they hope to crash another class instead. As they move out of this class, the system will automatically move you into this class from the wait list. So I've been watching the wait list, and already dozens of people have been at it. So if you're on the wait list, the only thing to do is, is nothing, just wait. It's very likely that those 50 people will be automatically moved off the wait list and into the class into the, in the, during the next um, week or so. If you have a problem, contact your TA. I'm going to give you the TA contact information now. If you're on the wait list, we'll see if we can get you access to Gaucho Space, but it doesn't really matter too much because mostly everything happens on the course website, and I'll be explaining that today. So what I want to do today is explain how the course is laid out, but there are a couple things I want to make really, really clear right away, and that is this is not a remote class. There is no remote option for this class. You might think, well, why is he saying that? That's obviously true. But when you look at the way the course is structured, all of the lectures are pre-recorded. They're all uploaded to YouTube. Everything that you need is online. In theory, then, you wouldn't have to come to class. Last time this course was taught, in the fall of 2021, in fact, I made coming to class optional because of COVID. The administration now has said that that is absolutely no longer permissible. And the reason is this. UCSB is not accredited as a remote institution. You know, there are other, um, you know, colleges that are just remote. You know, a lot of other universities have remote options, including some UCs like UC San Diego. UCSB is committed to remaining, at least in the foreseeable future, a fully brick and mortar school. So you have to be here. It, now, what we're doing to make sure that you're here is that you have to get the iClicker app for your phone, and we will take attendance at every class. I'll go over the details on attendance, but I'll tell you right now, we have you know, 10 weeks, two classes a week. That's 20 classes. Every class counts for 1% of your full grade, attendance-wise. So if you miss a class, you lose 1% of your total grade. So you don't want to miss it. The only way you can do it is by using the iClicker here in Campbell Hall. The iClicker software and system is capable of putting a geofence around this. So what it me that means is iClicker software will look to see where you are using your phone's GPS. It'll make sure that you're in this building, and that's the only way you'll get a credit for attendance. So if you think you can use the iClicker at home and have someone text you that I'm taking roll, um, it won't work. It might look like it works, but it, it won't work. The other thing about the iClicker, and I'll go over in detail, but I just want to say this while everybody's like really paying attention. In half an hour, you might not be paying as much attention. That the iClicker works best, maybe only works at all, if you're on Wi-Fi here, if you're on the UCSB Wi-Fi. UCSB, during COVID, went to great lengths to make the Wi-Fi in this room very robust to easily handle 860 people. That's important because you want your attendance to count. You want to get that 1% for the course, for the day. How it could be a problem is if you're on a cellular network. So UCSB has no control over what T-Mobile or Verizon has done as far as connection to this room. If 30 people are trying to hit T-Mobile at the same time, that can and has been a problem. So if you're not familiar with how to get on UCSB's Wi-Fi, you need to do that before Tuesday. We won't be taking roll today, so don't worry about that. But starting Tuesday, that'll be the first of your 20 days, and that's how that works. 
So what I'll be doing today is going over principally the course website. And I'm actually filming this. That's my camera sitting there, my um, phone sitting there following me around. I'm going to film this and put it up on the course website like everything else. So if you want to come back to it, you definitely can. So why don't I just stop that from following me and jump in and show you what the course is about. So first, this is the Gaucho Space page. You need to get, you know, if you're new to UCSB, you need to get on to Gaucho Space. It's not that crucial for this particular class because most things are on the website where I'm going to go directly, but this is nonetheless, you know, something you need for a few things. Uh, first, you can see here course website. If you ever want to know how to get to the course website, you forget how. Well, there are a few things you can do. First, just Google my name, put my name in your browser, and this you'll get to my landing page, which will take you to the website. I think if you actually just uh, put in your browser English 22, you'll probably get here. But if not, you can get to it from Gaucho Space. Instructor announcements, there aren't any there now. But they will be important. This is where, because all the uh, lectures are pre-recorded, this is how I'll communicate to you, with you. So every now and again, you want to check that. Um, Aisha, who is the TA who handles the technical end of things, has set this up to how to register for the iClicker. If you don't know how to get the iClicker and all, go to this link. It'll well. First, you need to download either the iClicker app or do it through a browser if you're using your computer. And then what you need to do is register your iClicker. That, follow that link, and that is an important step. And I, I can't stress it enough. So here's how it works. You have the iClicker software. You start using it. Everything looks fine. Everything is recorded to your phone or your computer. It looks good. If you do not register it with your UCSB perm, that information will not automatically be uploaded to Gaucho Space. So even though you've been attending all the time and you, you, know, you have perfect attendance, whatever, it's not going to show up here and be reflected in your grade until you register your computer as a UCSB device. You need to do that. If you forget, it's not the end of the world because your phone is remembering it, but you're relying on your phone to remember it. If you lose your phone or something, then suddenly you lost that data. You don't want to do it. Just register it. Automatically, it fires into the cloud. You can forget about it. It's, and it's also very good because you can go online here and look to see if you have attendance for that day. You should be doing that. Uh, every term it happens. You know, at the end of the term, someone comes up to me and says, but I've been attending every class, but for some reason the eye clicker says I just attended half of them. Well, I cannot help you with that. What you need to do is, if it's not working, like say you've come in here Tuesday and you take out an eye clicker um, poll and everything looks fine, but it's not showing up here in Gaucho space, you need to contact your TA and resolve the problem. If you don't get that resolved, that could mean that you know, you'll be halfway through the course and your attendance will not have been counted. You want to make sure that it's counted, you don't have any problems, and if you ever have a doubt if you got attendance credit or not, just check Gaucho space, check your um, app on iClicker. And if it's a problem, contact your TA. Um, regarding contacting your TA and contacting me, there are three TAs for the course, no sections. I'll explain how that works in a minute. But the main thing, if you have a question, is to post it right here where it says course Q&A. So instead of sending, you know, a gazillion, you know, emails to the TAs, it's better if you put your question here. And as it turned out, someone actually already put a really good question here. Um, if we go here and scroll down, instructions, someone noted that on the course website, there was a mistake with the time for the midterm and final. And that happened, as I explained here, because I actually copied this over from my spring course, English 24, and that was at a different time, and I forgot to correct the times when I put everything else over there. Um, I've since corrected it. Why this is good to do it this way? It creates an archive that if you have any questions, you may not even have to um, you know, look them, you may not have to ask it, someone may have already asked it here. Keeping up with this material and just paying attention to it is good. So, for example, let's say that you went through the website and you're a very sort of forward-thinking person and you put um, in your calendar at the wrong times. Well, you would be kind of screwed. But seeing this, you'll know that there's an actual mistake. Also, I should note that 
this is set up, the Q&A here, it's a forum, that if you as a student want to answer a question you feel you, cap you can, by all means do. So in other words, someone will ask here, is the final exam cumulative? Well, the, Q the um, course website, the syllabus says it is. So you could just say, well the, well, the syllabus says it is cumulative. So feel free to answer those. I'll be answering them. The TAs will be answering them as well. But if you have questions, that's where to put them. However, oh, also my office hours, the first of the TAs, um, Kiau, could you stand up for a second so the people, and, and your people are what, what is your um, alphabet again, Kiau, it's so A to. Yeah, the last name is from Anne to D, and I can't the Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll go over exactly his contact information, but um, here are office hours as well. Not much else happens on Gaucho Space except for this. So this is this week, nothing's happening. The lectures, the lectures proper start next week. So for each week, I give you a link to the course webpage, which makes it simple. But there's another Q&A set up here. And these Q&As are just to ask me questions during lecture. So the lecture is going to be pre-recorded. I'll show you them to you in a little bit and you'll get it. But while the lecture is projected up here, I'll be sitting over there at a table with a chair. I'll have a computer. If you have a question, and traditionally in a classroom you would raise your hand or whatever. 860 people, when we have used that approach, no one ever wants to raise their hand with 860 people. But this way, you enter the question here in that forum, I will be refreshing it and I'll be putting answers in there. This is specifically for questions about the syllabus. So next week, uh, next Thursday, I'll be talking about the Epic of Gilgamesh, I'll talk about the character of Gilgamesh or something unclear, put the question in there. If you have questions about the eye clicker or enrollment or when exams are gonna be and all, use that general Q&A. But this is just a real time um, thing here. It's, it's, it, honestly, it's not an ideal setup and the reason for that is it's not a live chat. I actually thought about using like Discord or Geneva or something, but I wanted to keep it like simple. So, well, what that means is if you put a question there, you won't know that I've answered it until you refresh your browser. So if you have that page open, you have to like refresh it and, and see. And from my end, I'll have to see if there are new questions, I have to keep refreshing it. It's, it's a downside, but the beauty of it is right here on the Gaucho space is an archive of material regarding each lecture. So if there are things, maybe I'm not very clear in a lecture, go here, and I'm mainly thinking like you're preparing for the midterm and final, go into these and look for clarifying points. It's, it's really going to be accompanying the lecture. And if you think about it, this is so much better than a traditional class where someone you know, raised their hand, I addressed it, everyone forgot it. You might, in the middle of the midterm, saying, but he said something about that in class, what was it? Well, here you have a chance to see all that together. Everything about this class is completely archived. The only other thing you really need this for much is Gaucho Cast. So, quick overview of the course. There are three things that you have to do for this course. Pretty easy. One, you have to come to lecture Tuesday and Thursday in this room at 9.30. Have to do that. Second, there's a reading every week. I'll go over those. You have to do the reading every week. Once you do the reading, you don't have to do anything else regarding the reading um, until the midterm. Same with the lecture. Once you attend lecture, you don't need to do anything else. But the third thing is a film. You're going to watch a film, a documentary, every week. That documentary um, will have a little introduction that I've posted to YouTube, and I'll show you how it works in detail, but just to give you an overview. Every week, the one thing you have to do after watching the film is go to my little YouTube video and make a comment on the film or comment on someone else's comment. That comment is part of your grade. It's 20% of your grade. I'll go over it. But that raises the question, where are you going to watch all these films and documentaries? A few of them are available free online. The rest of them are uploaded to here, which is Gaucho Cast. You can see a few of them here. If you just say show all, you can see that the documentaries for this week are down at the bottom here. If you kick into this before the flood, this will take you to the, the actual video of Before the Flood, which streams from 
Gaucho cast from UCSB. So you just click this and it starts playing. Deadly sins start to infuse we'll see their way into the paint. Leonardo DiCaprio here, maybe. Well, Wake lots of stuff. So that's where you watch the documentary. Let me tell you a couple things about this browser. Some of them, some of these things may occur to you right away, but worth noting. First, like a lot of um, video browsers like YouTube, for example, but, but unlike Netflix, you can adjust the speed of this. So a lot of people in the past have told me they've watched this at home with like roommates and all and just watched it like a video, fine. But if you've got a lot of work and you're trying to speed through things, you can move this up to like one and a quarter, one and a half speed. It's a little less pleasant, but I listen to like a lot of podcasts and a lot of audio books. One and a half, if you get used to it, is not so bad. The other thing worth noting about over here is the quality of it. And so if you look, I would generally use automatic, but if you're having trouble, if your uh, upload speed is slow, download speed is slow, you could go like to medium quality on that. The other thing, which is important, is of course you have closed captioning. But if you go over here and hit captions, you'll notice that the whole transcript for the documentary is all there. And you can scroll through this as you like. And whenever you get to a point, you click it here, it moves to that part of the video. That, don't use that instead of watching, but if you're coming back for the midterm and the final when we want to review this documentary, I don't think you're going to want to watch the whole film again, even you know, two, speed, two times speed. But you can go through here and look at important things. Um, I believe you can actually, yeah, you can cut and paste these too. So if something's important and you're taking notes, you can cut it right out of there. In fact, if you're, if you're not watching with friends and you're just kind of you know, studying and watching, you might want to have that open all the time. It's, um, it's pretty effective. And generally speaking, the GaochoCast um, is, is a pretty good browser, a pretty good um, video viewer. Okay, so that's kind of what Gaucho Space is. The main thing is here, if you click the web page, you get this. Um, this is really where everything resides. This is the course website, which um, is sort of linked to my um, series of websites, and it's on the UCSB um, English Department browsers. So scroll down so you can see all this. Yeah, just to be clear, this is the official website. For a while, if you visited this, you may have seen that last year's website was up. This is the official one. Um, this is actually an important point about just stumbling onto this. All this material is completely open, and open content and available to the public. I did that for a reason, because I want people anywhere to be able to go through this course and do it. Again, UCSB is a brick and mortar school. We can't make this official. People can't you know, get credit by taking it remotely. But I am of the opinion that you know, knowledge, in particular about things like the environment and climate crisis, should be available to everyone. So that's why this looks this way, um, and why it's all here rather than gaucho space. And it's also why it's also called Eco-Criticism 101. Um, mainly because English 22 is not a very descriptive name. If you type ecocriticism101.com into your browser, you'll immediately be led to this site. And that's in case people um, you know, want to study something like ecocriticism. It might be the first thing they look at. If you've taken my other classes, English 22 and 24, the other big lectures, you know that they are Climate Crisis 101. And it's mainly just to be more descriptive. So what's this course about? It's a sweeping survey of Western literature and culture from an environmental perspective. And let me just pause on that for a moment. Uh, Western culture and literature is not the only culture on the planet, for sure. And the reason we're focusing just on this one is not in any way to say that Western culture is better or more important. But the fact is, here in California, in the third, quarter, third decade of the 21st, in America, the US, we are heir to the Western tradition. So what we're trying to do with this class is interrogate why we in the West, in particular in the US, have the views that we do toward the environment, and what role did that play in bringing about the climate crisis. So that's why we're looking at this culture in particular. But just to make things interesting, the very last lecture, I'm going to offer a counterpoint, and that lecture is on Buddhism. And it's a, it's a quick history on how that tradition is so fundamentally different. 
but anyhow. What does it do? You know, so in much the same way that feminist critics are interested in literary representation of gender, ecological literary critics, and that's what we're doing here. Eco-criticism is a contraction for ecological literary or cultural criticism. People who do it, what you're going to be for this term is, are called eco-critics. Changing perceptions happen all the time with something like gender, um, but here we're going to see how those change over time. So basically, the course really, the, the end game, is to try to understand contemporary values with respect to the environment, specifically with respect to the climate crisis. To do that, we have to look at their long history, which is nearly 5,000 years, and we'll be looking at that much. And if you think someone like Thoreau or Wordsworth are the place to go, and we're going to be reading both Thoreau and Wordsworth, but the fact is these issues have been appearing for many hundreds of years, in some cases, like with deforestation, which will be our first major issue for thousands of years in Western literature. So we're going to start with the Epic of Gilgamesh. This is the, the oldest um, major work of literature in the West. It's the first epic in the West. And it's provocative because for thousands of years, up to a few decades ago, people read this as a celebration of Gilgamesh, the hero of this epic. It's, the, it's his epic, the Epic of Gilgamesh, as Gilgamesh in, embodied the values and the, the notion of an epic hero that will later reappear in like Homer and the Iliad and Odyssey and all that. All in all, a celebration of Gilgamesh. In this course, we're going to be looking at that differently. And we'll see, why does Gilgamesh become the epic hero that he does? We're reading the first third of the epic, and it's basically because he decides to make his city, his culture, better by destroying a large forest, by deforesting it. He has a city, um, Iraq. The city needs to be rebuilt. How is he going to do it? There's this, there's this huge cedar forest that's protected by a god. He goes there, kills the god, and clear strip cuts the forest, sends everything down the Euphrates, and uses it to build his city, and he becomes a hero. From a modern environmental sensibility, we kind of have to question that. No one had questioned that for thousands of years, but this course is going to be questioning a range of things like that. Also worth noting, yes, we're doing eco-criticism, but we're also going to be considering related humanities fields, like philosophy, history, religion, and these show up as environmental history, eco-philosophy, eco-theology, eco-art history, art and architecture, and also environmental media studies. So even though this is focusing on literature, you kind of already know this from the films, there's going to be a broader scope of what we're analyzing here. Um, and some of it is going to be a little tough. So even with Gilgamesh, we're going to be doing eco-theology. We're going to be looking at his religion and the impact that it had on the environment. But the next major religion we're going to take up is we're reading the opening chapters of the book of Genesis. No one gets upset if you, if you talk about Gilgamesh's religion and question it. And people do get upset if you question the Judeo-Christian tradition. But we're going to be looking at people like Pope Francis Al Gore, who are deeply committed Christians, yet read that text environmentally. Unfortunately, it has not always been read environmentally. Um, this is me. Um, don't call me, as I note down at the bottom here, uh, don't call me Professor Hiltner, just call me Ken. Um, that's just a little about me. Uh, notice my contact information isn't here because you should be contacting your TAs instead. Um, so Ryan isn't here today, but it's very easy who your TA is. You want to write this down. You can always just go to the website. It's always on. If your name, last name begins with A to L, uh, Ryan is your TA, and Kiao you just met if your last name begins with M to Z. They are your first contact person. But again, if you have a sort of a general question, you can just put it in the Q&A on the, on the course Gaucho space. Anything more personal, sure, contact your TA. There's a third TA, and Aisha, who is here. Aisha, do you want to stand? Uh, so let me scroll up to show where you are, Aisha. Aisha is the lead TA, and she handles 
Things like eye clicker issues. Aisha is the tech person for the course. So if you have eye clicker issues, if you have problems with gaucho space, like the grades aren't populating there, um, if you for some reason can't do what I just did, which is launch gaucho cast and watch the films, um, very important DSP, the Disab Disabled Students Program at UCSB. Um, if you're part of that program, you know that the exams function differently. Any questions about that or to make sure that the accommodation have been provided, check with Aisha, and basically any other technical questions, check with Aisha. Uh, if you're in doubt, check with your, your TA first. Your TA is the, you know, your first contact person. I can get you all on here at once. Yeah, so those are the people that you need to contact. But again, maybe you don't need to contact anyone. Maybe you can just go ahead and um, put your question in Gaucho space in the Q&A. Um, yeah, just to be really clear about this, this is not an, uh, an online course for UCSB students. You have to attend the lectures every Tuesday, every Thursday. There will be a grade, will be attendance taken with the eye clicker. And um, please note what I note here: I am not in a position to offer any exceptions to this. This is um, so just be like candid. Last year, a number of professors got together and came up with ways of sort of subverting, I don't want to say subverting, it's a strong word, of allowing students to not come to class if they were concerned about COVID. And we worked out a system and it all worked and then the administration realized what was happening and the administration said, absolutely not, everyone has to come to class. This is a brick and mortar school, full stop. The only exception, and I put it here, is um, if you have a medical exception. So who would that be? Let's say you're immunocompromised for some reason. Well, you probably shouldn't be coming to a class of 860 people when a pandemic is still not ended. So if you talk to DSP and contact them, they should be able to get you an accommodation. That's the only one. And again, I'm not in the position to offer any kind of medical exception. However, if you do miss a class for a brief period, and this is already happening, so with a class this large, I have already gotten emails that people have tested positive for COVID, they're in houses where their roommates have tested positive for COVID, they're quarantining. If anything like that happens, contact your TA and you will you know, get credit. You'll have to provide, you always have to provide documentation if you're asking for attendance credit, but if you can do that, then you'll get credit without a problem. And the beauty of this class, when we get to the lectures, you'll see all the material is up online anyhow. So if you miss the lecture, it's not like you have to ask someone in the class for lecture notes. You can watch the exact same lecture and come right up to speed with it. So, um, but you do have to check with your TA. Um, just to be clear, there are no discussion sections. All the content for this class is delivered through the lectures. You may ask yourself how this works, by the way, because <clears throat> this is a four credit course and we're only meeting for two hours and 50 minutes, which actually the way UCSB calculates hours is three hours, but there's a missing hour in there. We have taken care of that because you're watching a documentary instead of coming to class. So imagine this class were taught on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You'd have an hour and a quarter lecture on Monday, an hour and a quarter lecture on Wednesday, just the same way that we do. On Friday, you'd have an hour and a quarter documentary that you were watching. And in fact, a few years ago, quite a few years ago, when I taught this over in Ivy Theater One, that's just how we did it. And we actually showed the films in the lecture hall, and that counted for the um, content time. But when GauchoCast came, we went live, and we realized we could put things up there, then I offloaded that time for you to do it on your own. So you still have to do it. And, and let, me just, let me just reinforce that. A few years ago, and I've done it a couple times, um, I'm able to look at the analytic data for GauchoCast. In other words, I can actually look and go for individual people and see how much of a film you're watching, how long you've watched it for. I don't do that. It's an incredible amount of data. I don't really care. Um, if you don't watch it, it's going to show up when you take the exams because the exams ask questions on the documentaries. But about that, I'm just curious. I looked at people who did really well at the end of the course, and people in this class can do well 
there were going to be dozens of people who get an A plus in this course. And I was just curious, what were their viewing habits on GauchoCast? Without exception, every one of those person watched at least the whole documentary in length, and most of them watched more. Why was that? They came back and they were reviewing the documentary, presumably for an exam. The flip side, I looked at a number of people who had poor grades, C minus, D, and failing grades. And I found, again, without exception, that not one of them was watching all the films. People were watching 15 minutes, 20 minutes, getting bored, shutting it off, never to return. Those people, without exception, did not do as well on the exams. So I'm just saying, these films aren't that tough. In fact, they're taking the place of a section. It's pretty easy to watch them. I chose them to make them kind of interesting, but you need to watch them. Um, yeah, you, you don't really need to know this, but I teach three courses this size in this room. The next one will be in the winter, English 23, which is the climate crisis, what it is, and what each of us can do about it. In fact, I have a list of these three here, um, just so you know. But the thing to note here is that although complementary, these courses are not prerequisites for each other. If you're interested in what we're doing, you may want to come to the other lecture, attend the other lectures, but they're not um, a requirement for this course. Um, curious why I'm teaching the course. I explain that, even with a long explanation. Ah, navigating this website. This website um, is designed to be viewable on a phone. So you see the text here is pretty large. If you're looking at it on a laptop, you say, oh, that text is kind of large, why is that? It's that way for multiple reasons. First, this course is designed to be completely accessible through the American with Disabilities Act and for the Rehabilitation Act and, and pretty much everything else. So you can um, read this, because this font is two and a half times larger than a traditional font on a computer, and it's also in a specific font that's designed for people with so-called print disabilities, so that it's very accessible to read. People with low vision can come to this website, read it okay. But it has two benefits, too, for everyone else. One, it makes for a nice size on the screen so that you can read this even in the back of the room, instead of tiny font. Second, if you want to be looking at this material at any point on your phone, you can. This looks very nice on a phone if you turn the phone sideways and look at it in the landscape view. So if you have a regular smartphone somewhere around a six inch screen, um, if you're looking at it sideways, it's going to be even wider than a paperback book. Why that matters is because we're actually going to be reading part of a book from this website, um, and you, it's Henry David Thoreau's Walden, and if you want, you can just read it right from your phone. It, it'll work pretty easily. Um, there's a link here. I didn't get last year's in, but the year before, there are 800 reviews of the class if you want to know what people think. I'll be going through the syllabus here in a minute, the individual weeks, but let me just jump down and um, get a couple basic things squared away. Yeah, so again, those three things you need to do. You need to come to lecture. This is it. Um, just so you know, there are 20 class sessions, right? 10 weeks, two per week. But we have Thanksgiving on one of the Thursdays, which is our only official holiday for this class. And the midterm and final, which I'll talk about, are also on a Thursday. So you actually only have 17 lectures. And you get full credit, of course, if you take the exam, um, either exam. And of course, you get full credit for Thanksgiving. The lectures, lectures all stream from YouTube, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, readings. So there's a, a reading for every week, as I suggested. They, for the most part, come from the course reader. The course reader is available from these folks, SB Printer, and that's in the use end. If you hit this, in fact, I'll do it here, you will get taken to their site, and you can buy the reader here. 4350 is if you want it shipped to you. If you want to pick it up over at the USEN, whoops, I didn't want to do that. If you want to pick it up over at the USEN, um, that would be here. That's only $38. And if you want digital access, it's even less. Um, so, hold on. This doesn't want to let me go. Ah. Okay. By the way, to navigate this site at any time, um, you probably want to just jump down to syllabus, which is near where we were. But at any time, there's a little chevron over here. And this even works on a mobile device like a phone that takes you back to the top if you get confused. Let's go down here. Again, we'll just go through the 
syllabus till we get to the reading. So that's the reader. It's 35 bucks for a hard copy, for a digital access. I note here that in the past, people have told me they did not like digital access. This became a real issue during COVID because everyone was getting digital access. The th reason for it is it's not like a Kindle or EPUB. You don't get it downloaded to your device so you can have it any time. It remains in the cloud. What you do is you get access to it. You have to log in each time to get access to it, which is odd since you've paid for it. You think you'd get a download, but no. People find it a little frustrating. The only other text you need to buy is Silent Spring by Rachel Carr. And I list an edition here on um, Amazon for $15.99. Kindle's a little less. If you want to pay a little more, I think there's an audible version. People have told me that if you go to your browser and enter in Silent Spring PDF, that you will find a free online version of Silent Spring. I don't know that's true. I don't know that it's legal. I cannot weigh in on that. I'm just telling you what people have told me. If it is, in fact, true, which I believe it probably is, that's fine to get. Might be a little less convenient, maybe more convenient if you're using like a, a PDF editor to view documents and all. The only other text you need is Walden, and I created an online version of that, which is here. This is the class version. You think this would be a faster connection here? I wonder if it's because the, uh, there's so many people in the room. Um, trust me, it's there. Yeah, there it is, Walden. And this has an introduction um, and a preface by me, and then you can go down and um, actually read Thoreau from here, which is what we'll be doing. So, okay. Course films, we have kind of over that. Watch them on Gaucho Space. Uh, Gaucho cast, and then I'll show you in a minute, maybe I'll go there next, how the commenting works on that. So let's do that next before the grades. So every week, it's very simple. Once you've read this material, the only thing you have to do every week is to go to the weekly web page. By the way, you'll see here there's an introductory class. That's today. So if you click on this, you will get here, and notice it says introduction coming soon. Why isn't there an introduction? Because we're filming it right now. So sometime, probably today, I will go home, edit this, upload it. But for the most part, what you will be doing is, uh, this, is uh, this is a very slow connection. Isn't that interesting? Um, this is trying to go back to the page we were on. So um, that will be up. That's mainly for the benefit of people who uh, were not able to attend class today. So it's now back here again. <laughs> here we are. OK, so what I really want to do, and see if it takes a while to get here, is go to week number one. And of course, it's going to take a little while. Uh, so these weekly pages are the ones that you really need to go to every week. Everything resides on those pages. Um, and for your sake, I hope that they load faster than this. I will note also that um, everything on those pages is um, very viewable on a phone also, if you want to do it that way. Um, hold on. Wow. I thought of this ahead of time. I had this open. Huh, how about that? I surprised myself. So, week number one. What do you do? Every week there's a reading. Here it is, The Myth of Gilgamesh and a Forest Journey by John Perlin. Both are in the course reader. So that's what you have to do. Uh, lecture, you have to attend the lectures here. Um, and the lectures can be streamed from this site. I want to scroll down and show you. I'm also going to show you how you can access the lecture notes, which is something called a Prezi, and the fact that there are PDFs. But I'll go over that in a minute. Films, films can be a little confusing because I mentioned I have these two other large lectures. One of them, English 22, 23, which is on the climate crisis, we share some of the lectures. And the reason for that is if for something like the environmental um, impact of food systems, if that's the week, then what we have for that is the film Cowspiracy. You may have seen it. But if you've already seen Cowspiracy, there's an alternate film. So if you take this course, you'll watch Cowspiracy. If you take English 23 in the winter, you would watch the alternate film, which is actually an equally wonderful film called Wasted. And a lot of people don't know, a lot of people think that 
Um, if they want to make the biggest um, change they can make to their lifestyle with respect to um, diet to help the environment to reduce their carbon footprint, that you would do that by going to a largely plant-based diet. First, that's an absolutely wonderful thing to do. It makes a huge impact, probably 15% of your time at footprint. But more food is wasted in the United States causing a larger carbon footprint than eating a largely plant-based diet. In other words, if you can do just one thing, don't waste food because that creates a bigger problem than not eating meat. The ideal thing, don't waste as much food and, and don't eat principally beef. I mean, this is a big, if there's a big takeaway with food systems, that's it, don't eat beef. But anyhow, you'll see that there are two films, uh, an option. And then what you do is, after watching one of the films, go to the short lecture that I've uploaded. We'll see if this goes quickly here. And this would be it here. This is the weekly documentary introduction. Every week there will be one of those. So the assignment above, which is to read or to watch either before the flood or an inconvenient sequel, depending if you've seen it or not. After you've watched that documentary, you want to go to this, and we'll see if this, ah, it does load. They're all branded, so the intros will all look the same. But what will happen is you'll see me, if you could know the truth about the threat of climate change, would you want to know? And by the way, these are kind of nicely done because after I filmed these, I turned them over to some UCSB students who um, punched Miami up the Miami is now flooding on sunny days to the disturbing fact that the fossil fuel interests are spending millions of... So they're, they're pretty nicely made. But go here. To, uh, so the way to do it, actually, is just to click on YouTube in which case you'll go to that video. Where are we? So, um, oh, this is, hold on. Let me see if I can actually do that and if it opens okay. Yeah, so it's not the uh, DSL, it's not the uh, connection here. It must be the UCSB English Department servers that are slow. Anyhow, here's that same video that we were just looking at. Scroll down and you will see there are over 1,400 comments. Those are left over from the last two years. This is where you make a comment on the film. Curious as to what kind of comments people make? Well, you can look at 1,400 of them. You'll see um, some people, um, put, and it's actually a really interesting um, notion, I think, of putting things online, because if you're kind of curious, like how what you're doing compares to what other people doing, are doing, you can see how much time they're putting in right here. So here are two comments, one person spending more time than another, more time than another, um, and some people are spending a lot of time on the comments. So, <laughs> I'm, so if the end of the term comes and you, you know, email your TA, why didn't I get a higher grade for my comments? I made a comment every week. Well, some people are putting in more effort than others. So um, I admit that I've, I scrolled down to that one because I saw it was very long and I wanted to uh, show you. That's, that's a little much. I think a paragraph or two. And what you'll see when we go over the assignment that what you want to do um, for half of them is comment on another person. So this is kind of my way of trying to get a little discussion going. So half your comments, and it's very clear on the syllabus, will be you know, fresh a comment that you make, half of them you'll be commenting on what someone else said, but your you're both will be, of course, commenting on the, um, the film. So that's how the documentaries work. Now, here is the lecture one and lecture two for next week. Let's go to lecture two. This is the um, lecture on the first, so lecture one next Tuesday is like an introductory thing about the course and how it functions academically, but then this is um, on the Epic of Gilgamesh, our first reading. Let me scroll this up bigger. This, in a way, goes back. You'll, in part, hear me talk again. But most of the lectures are going to be like this. And let me turn on the closed captioning. And this is what you'll see. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can pop that open again. 
and closed captioning is on. Um, this amazing city. And, you know, um, today, you know, we would, we would, you know, we tend to, to frown on things that are sort of overly constructed and overly built, but not here. There, there's absolute. So three things are going on in the screen. And again, 90% of the time when you come to class, you're going to be seeing that. So you see the least important part, which is me there talking. But it's better than seeing me here. You can barely see me here. Here you can actually can eye contact, see my emotions and all. What this is, is the lecture notes that I'm talking from. So they are the, the sort of the core of the course. I'm going to show you how you can access them directly online, and even better, how you can get a PDF of all the lecture notes. But also, this shouldn't be overlooked here. This is closed captioning of what I'm saying. And after this course, after I produced these, I had a, an undergraduate RA go through these for the most part and correct the closed captioning. So you'll notice that there's punctuation, there's capitalization, uh, everything is nice and clean. There have been many studies that have proven that if you read something while you hear it, it's actually a more effective way to learn. So you, know, you could just be in here watching me talk from this podium, but here you can actually read it too. And let me show you something here. Let's go to this on YouTube here. You may know this about YouTube, but just in case you don't, if you go here, you can put show transcript. This is like in GauchoCast, the entire transcript of what I'm saying. So if you want to review this during you know, exam prep, you can. Just like Gaucho Space, you click it here, and it takes you to that part of the lecture. So to my way of thinking, this is far superior than just having me up here talking. For one thing, you don't have to worry about taking things down for here. In fact, let me just show you something. I'll go jump back to it. You're on the same web page, so let's just we'll quickly scroll up to the top. So we're on week number two, uh, week number one, which has lectures one and two. If you go here, click on it, it will give you a PDF of all those lecture notes. Notice that um, we had an RA working on this as well. There's a lot of white space on the page, so kind of have two ways of doing this. You want to do it old school, print it out on paper. You can make comments here. You can underline things right between the lines. Or if you're using PDF editing software on a device, you happen to have a, la uh, a tablet or a laptop. And by the way, this works equally well on a phone too, but again, you want to turn your phone sideways if you're using PDF editing software, but you can do that. So what you might want to have open on your computer is not the lecture because you can see it up here in class, but you can have you know um, this PDF open down below here for it. And there's a PDF for every lecture that we have. The lectures also reside online, and hopefully this will work as well. If you go down to the very bottom, and I've just scrolled out of the page, to the end of the page, this is the lecture um, as a Prezi. So if you don't know about Prezi, it's just simple. You know, typically with lecture notes, they're done with PowerPoint, Google Slides maybe. There's also something called Prezi, and this is where our lecture notes reside. I'll tell you right now, you may not ever go to the Prezi because you don't have to. If you just watch those YouTube lectures, you see it all. But if you want to, and as an aid in studying, you can go to the Prezi. So what this is, is uh, basically a mind map of uh, 5,000 years of literature, starting in Mesopotamia, working up big jump to Hebrew culture, Greek, Roman, medieval, Renaissance, 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st, really. So that's what's happening on this um, axis going, going up here. But also, we're moving out of northern Africa, jumping the Mediterranean to Greek and Roman culture, then into Europe proper, then to England, and then over to North America with Thoreau and Rachel Carson. So how these function are, these are the lectures themselves, which contain all the lecture notes here. So next Thursday, we'll be doing Epic of Gilgamesh, Mesopotamia. You click this, this is the entire lecture laid out for you. You can, if you just use your arrow to advance, which you can do here, it'll take you to the, the first um, sections of it. And if you, if you look at this, 
Um, if you remember what the YouTube video looked like, here I am in the video, and down here is where the closed captioning is. So this is the same exact thing. This is what I'm lecturing from. But if you want to use this for like studying, if you remember something about genus Loki figures and what were they, you can randomly access anything by just going here and going into the genus Loki figures. If at any and you can just start scrolling through those here. If at any time you want, you just click here and go back home and um, you're here. You probably won't ever use this, but it is available to you. So if you think about it then, the actual lecture notes you have in three forms. You have them on the one hand in the Prezi, which you probably won't use, on the other hand as a PDF, and finally as the lecture itself. Please note, however, that, uh, let me just make this large, the lecture notes are not sufficient. You will go online and you will find people saying, I never went to class, I just read the PDFs and I did fine. Um, that's just not true. Uh, first off, one thing to be very cautious of, because there's a lot of talk about this class online, because it's so large, um, many people, probably more than a couple hundred people, are not taking this class for a grade. You may be one of them. People are taking a pass, no pass, and that's fine. It's a lower division course, probably not your major, it's fine. But to pass a pass, no pass class, you just need to get a C, 73%, 73.5, I forget, and above, but just a C. So many people have a more cavalier attitude, like, ah, I don't really care if I miss a couple lectures, I don't really worry about the um, you know, attendance, I'm taking the test, not fully preparing, because they're happy to get a B or low B because they still pass. That's you, that's fine, but if, don't listen to that advice if you're hoping to get an A or an A plus in this class. It's just, it's just really bad advice. Let me show you a couple other things about this while I'm here. If you're in YouTube or in the um, streaming from the class website, if you go to subtitles here, you can go to auto translate. UCSB is a Hispanic serving institution, something of which I am particularly deeply proud. And if you want to, you could watch these in lots of different languages, but say, for example, Spanish. Oops, hold on. With this, you know, um, is or are encouraging us to sort of walk around and as we're walking, explore all these different things. I think the, the uh, another example, um, UCSB's population now is, you can go to other languages here, I believe 10% um, of our students are Chinese. If you wanted to watch this in Big Chinese at the same is, time. Especially in its moment, its era, this would have seemed that. like an extraordinary. Now, why would you want to do that and how would you take advantage of this in this class? Well, remember, you have to come to lecture. So you're going to be watching it here with English subtitles. But let's say you want to improve your English. Um, you could set up your laptop, and you can even do this on a phone. It looks fine on a phone. Again, it's designed to run on a phone. But you, whatever device you have, set it up for a language which you're comfortable with. Get it queued up to the very beginning of the lecture. When I start the lecture, or Aisha starts the lecture, playing up here, obviously keep your computer muted or it'll drive you, you know, a little backy. But if you do that, and then you can look down and read it in a language with which you're more comfortable while listening to me say it in English. That could be an advantage for you. I don't know if it, um, if it would be, but it's designed, we, we spent a lot of trouble making sure that the closed captioning was accurate. That's all the work that we did with respect to punctuation, capitalization, spelling and all, and that should help the translation um, efficiency. If you poo-poo YouTube's translation, and I used to, it gets better every year. And in a way, this is forward thinking because in three or four years, it's going to be better still. But right now, it's pretty good. And especially if you're uh, confused about a certain name or something, it's, um, it can be very useful. So anyhow, that's what you do. So to simplify it again, go to the weekly page. Once you cover everything, do the reading. Come to the lectures. If you want to go to the Prezi, you can. Probably not. You might want to print out those or um, download the PDFs. Then, of course, watch the film, whichever one you should. Watch my little introductory video, which is, again, down here. 
And after you're done watching that, make a comment. So again, come to class twice, do a reading, watch a film, comment on the film. You do not need to comment on the lectures. You do not need to comment on the readings. You don't need to do anything further on them. Just make sure you understand them because they will be showing up in the, um, on the exams. So let's see. Um, I want to go back to the syllabus. Ah, and it's working quickly now. So let's go down here. Course grades. So I've described everything you need to do, and I keep repeating what you need to do. Here's how it works. Attendance is worth 20% of the course grade. So since there are 20 classes, each session counts for 1% of the course grade. Attendance uh, will not be taken on the first introductory day. That's today, but will after that. It's going to be taken by way of iClicker student. Remember in Gaucho Space, there was a link to that. Well, here's another link. Make sure you get that set up. Um, it's also the case that it can be geofenced, so that means if you're outside of the lecture hall, um, you, you would not receive attendance. How it works is Aisha will be handling that while the lecture is playing, generally five times during the lecture at random intervals, you will, a little thing will come on the screen and just tell you to click that you're in the room. There'll be no questions to speak of. Um, it's just to check that you're here. You have to get 75% of those, in other words, four out of the five. So what that means, if you come a little late, you're still okay because you'll get four of the five. If you have to leave a minute or two early, you can do that. But the other thing to keep in mind regarding that, these lectures run for like almost exactly 75 minutes. I put a lot of time into that. So if you do get here late and you, you, know, you click and you still get credit, it's all good, but go to the YouTube video and watch the few minutes that you missed because there might be something important there. Okay, so midterm final exams. Um, they are here during the class period between 9.30 and 10.45. The midterm is October 27th. The final exam is December 1st. So that's important because there's an exam period, of course, exam week after the class ends. We will not be into that week. Our exam will take place before exam week. It'll take place on the very last day of class. It'll take the place of the last day of class. That's an advantage, I think, in that if you have a number of other classes, you want to prepare for them and all, you can do that after this class. But it does mean you'll have to be um, you know, prepared a little early for our class. Um, the midterm will cover the first five weeks of the course. So just to be clear, that's the first nine lectures. So first five weeks should be 10 lectures, but the last Thursday is taken up by the midterm itself. So nine lectures and the first five readings and film assignments. So the final exam will also cover uh, the final nine lectures and the last five readings, but it will not be cumulative. So once you cover that first material, unless it's mentioned in class again. So I, I just drew attention to genus loci figures. Well, they reappear later in the course. So I might ask what a genus loci figure is in the second half of the class because we talked about them in the second half of the class. So. Each exam is for 30% of the course grade. Oops. Um, so 30 and 30 is 60% total for the two exams. Each exam has 60 multiple choice questions. Therefore, each question is worth one half point of the total grade. They're all multiple choice, and generally you'll be selecting from five possibilities. And sometimes the fifth is all of the above or something like that. Since they take place during the regular class period, each exam will be 75 minutes long. So you have 75 minutes to answer 60 questions. If you have prearranged DSP accommodations through Disabled um, Students Program, that's a different matter. The exams are, are totally old school. They are paper-based. They will be handed out, and there will be a grading sheet which has the little bubbles you have to fill in. You have to put your name and perm on it. So bring a number two pencil. In years past, the exams have been done online during COVID. We uh, ran them through Gaucho Space. It was always a profound difficulty because 
We were concerned about academic dishonesty, and it was always a moving target. The more we came up with ways of making it less likely that people would, um, would not be honest, the more people tried to subvert it in different ways. Paper-based is, um, is more difficult to do that. So it's not open book, but to discourage academic dishonesty, um, the paper-based exams are passed out. There are four different versions of them. They've all been collated differently. So you're all answering the same 60 questions, but they're in totally different different order, and there'll be multiple pages. So if you look over and try to get the answer to number three, your neighbor will be working on an entirely different question. It'll be very hard to do it. If anyone does um, attempt academic dishonesty, it's pretty easy nowadays. We just take a picture of you with the phone, and we turn it over to um, UCSB's uh, academic affairs uh, division. And they're not very nice, so, so don't cheat, please. Um, yeah, so just so you know, the exams include questions on the readings and lectures, but also questions on the course films and my short intros. So it's not like it's just the lectures, it's all three of those things. It's the lectures, the readings, the films, and sometimes in my introduction to the film I put in some um, info. The other thing, the final component, is the comments of the course films. They're worth 20% of the grade. So if you do the math there, 20% for attendance, 20% for the YouTube comments, 30 for the midterm, 30 for the final, adds up to 100. So remember you have one film per week, that's 10 films, therefore each comment counts for 2% of the course grade. That might explain why, for example, when we looked at the YouTube comments, that one person put in an extra long comment because they wanted to make sure that they were getting the full 2%. Again, that, was, that one was a little overkill, but you do want to take these seriously, and you saw you know, one person writes two you know, sentences um, and expects to get 2% of the course grade from that. That's, um, that's, that's not a wise decision. So here's how the comments work. You make them on YouTube. But you have seven days to make the weekly comments. And I actually note, so if I go here to week two, up to the comments, um, the YouTube comments on Ken's short videos on the films need to be completed by 6 a.m. on Monday, October 3rd. So that's not this Monday coming up, because the first videos will be next week. That's the following Monday by 6 a.m. I used to say Sunday by midnight, but I found out that a lot of people like to work later than that. So um, 6 a.m., the sunrise, Monday morning, that's the idea behind that. So that's when you have to have them done um, to receive full credit. Uh, you don't have to use your real name on YouTube. You can use any name that you want. That's fine. Um, right. And please note that... There are some videos that we will not be watching on GauchoCast, but they're actually uh, run from YouTube. There's some that are like in the public domain. Don't comment on those videos. Comment on my introductory video, even if the video you're watching is online. So a couple important notes here. First, six of your YouTube comments, so six of the 10 total, um, should be made to a comment uh, should be a comment made on a fellow student's comment. So the first, and that's five and five, so the first five comments that you make, um, three of those should be a comment to someone else. And that's just so that you're kind of, you know, um, seeing what other people are thinking. This will encourage you to read other people's comments, find the one that you find particularly interesting that resonates with you, and comment on that. Um, and I note here, reading through the um, comments is thought-provoking in its own right. This is very important. It's the only thing on the whole syllabus in red because I wanted to like make it important. As you make your weekly comments, cut and paste each of them into a single text file on your computer. In other words, you make the YouTube comment, copy it, and save it on your computer. Open a text file, I don't care if it's MS Word, text file, whether it's Google Doc, whatever, and save it. Because what you're going to do is have all five of those for the first five uh, films, you're going to be asked to upload those to Gaucho Space. If you've just left them on YouTube, you have to go back and try to find them in YouTube. YouTube has had issues in the past where people said they lost comments, but don't, you don't have any of that to worry about. As long as you save it, you're good and that will be uploaded to Gaucho Space. The comments for the first five films need to be uploaded by 6 a.m. Monday, October 31st. So um, again, that's a Monday morning. Um, and how that worked in the scheme of things, the midterm was that Thursday before 
So this is sort of halfway point in the class. And then you have the weekend to finish your comments and get them all together and upload it. Same with the, um, the final exam. Um, there are specific instructions on how to upload your comments here. I won't go over them now. Um, you can go over them um, when you're ready to upload, because you'll forget it in five weeks. Uh, there is an honor section that takes place on Thursday, basically after this class. If you want to join, email me and tell me why you want to join. Um, there are often a lot of people who want to join, so your, your answer should be pretty compelling. Um, again, I noted where there are course announcements and the Q&A, course materials all located online. Um, these Q&As you may find interesting. There is no extra credit, uh, telling you now, because Every year at the end of the term, people, you know, come to me and I have a 91.9. 91 is there any way I can get extra credit so I can go from an A minus to an A? Um, the class is just too large. We have too few two a, uh, TAs, so there's no way to, um, to get extra credit. I have questions here about, you know, if you have questions, how do you email them? How does that work? Personal questions. Um, explain why the website is set up for people uh, with low vision and so on. So most of this is pretty straightforward. So questions on anything. If you have questions, you can go ahead and ask them online too. You can ask them now. Did I say everyone leave or did I say ask questions? Anyone have a question? Okay, anyone who doesn't have a question can leave. Anyone with a question can stay. And you might want to um, you could come up to see me if you like.